Today's video will be about the realignment move announced yesterday, Chicago State leaving the WAC to become an independent. Chicago State will play out its final year in the WAC in the 2021-2022 school year. People might wonder, how can a league boot a member? Well, Chicago State was only a provisional member of the WAC. They had never become a permanent member of the WAC. Chicago State was a contract member as opposed to a full equity partner. Therefore, the WAC had the ability to simply not renew Chicago State's contract. And we know this because at the CSU Board of Trustees meeting in 2016, it was revealed that the school had joined the WAC in 2013 on a five-year contract set to expire in 2018. There had been nothing on that front since, but considering CSU leaves in 2022, we can infer that the WAC likely renewed CSU in 2018 for a four-year contract set to expire in 2022. Chicago State mentioned in its press release that they joined the WAC with the understanding that there would be a Midwest division anchored by Chicago State and UMKC. But realistically, that was never going to happen. The WAC was likely just throwing anything against the wall back in 2012 and 2013 to save its own league and keep the auto bid and get members to join. The press release also made it sound like Chicago State was voluntarily leaving. But realistically, the WAC just didn't renew Chicago State's contract and let the school spin it however they wanted for their own good. Chicago State is going to have an even rockier road as a D1 independent as they lose those NCAA tournament and WAC conference distribution shares. The Knight Commission estimates that between the NCAA tournament share and the conference distribution share, and as well as media rights, that amounted to $1.28 million of Chicago State's athletic budget, which is about a quarter of their budget. And Chicago State's going to be losing much of that by not belonging to a conference any longer. Also, there's an NCAA bylaw that limits your games against non-D1s to just four games, and that includes exhibitions. Another NCAA bylaw is that one-third of your regular season games must be played in your home venue, so Chicago State can't become Carver Bible College and Washington Generals their way across the country for a payday for every D1 game. According to this bylaw, one-third of their regular season games must be at the Jones Convocation Center. However, I've found instances of teams being non-compliant, barely non-compliant, but still non-compliant, and nothing came of it. One option Chicago State has is dropping down to D2 and to the GLVC. They're a questionable institutional fit because there's 10 privates, so who knows what the appetite is for those privates to at a public school. This would also not really save, not save a lot of money for Chicago State because many of these schools are at or above Chicago State's budget. Lindenwood's athletic budget is $18.5 million. Indianapolis's athletic budget is $18 million. Lewis $7.9 million. UMSL $5.6 million. Chicago State is at $4.7 million, and that budget would go lower without the D1 revenue streams like those NCAA tournament distributions and those D1 buy games. Also, the GLVC might not even, it's no guarantee that they would invite Chicago State. The Horizon or the OVC very well could end up adding Southern Indiana within the next five years, especially with the brand new Screaming Eagle Arena. So that would leave the GLVC with an even 14 members. Another option for Chicago State is a Division Three, but there's no good fit for them. All 32 D3 schools in Illinois and Indiana are private schools. And then the WIAC is an all University of Wisconsin system, all football league. So institutional fitness is paramount in D3 conferences and Chicago State just doesn't fit anywhere. Another option for the Cougars is the Chicagoland in the NAIA. Chicago State would tout the best arena, bar none, in the NAIA. In the NAIA, budgets are only $1 to $2 million, and once CSU reduces its sports portfolio and loses its D1 revenue streams, its $4.7 million budget would likely fall in line in that $1 to $2 million budget range. There's only three publics in this league, but Governor State is one of them, and they're a nearby similar school to Chicago State. There's 15 members and nine in Illinois, so you got to think all those Illinois members would love to have Chicago State. Another option for Chicago State is dropping athletics, but this is improbable because Chicago State needs 1,000 full-time undergrads in order to maintain their PBI, predominantly black, institution designation. If CSU were to fall below 1,000 full-time undergrads and lose that PBI designation, then the school is subject to termination from that federal student loan program, which would complicate the financial troubles the school has even further. According to the Department of Education, Chicago State 
has 1,287 full-time undergrads as of a couple years ago with 202 student-athletes. Dropping those 202 student-athletes would leave the school dangerously close to that 1,000 full-time undergrad marker. Chicago State will definitely be exploring and discussing other D1 conferences. The athletic director a few months ago at the Board of Trustees meeting mentioned the Horizon and OVC. The problem is the Horizon and OVC both have 12 members, and they both have other schools that they would target before they would look into Chicago State. The Horizon would target Bellarmine or Southern Indiana, and the OVC would target Lipscomb, Bellarmine, Southern Indiana, or Western Illinois. The Summit League is a non-starter, as back when it was the mid-continent, it had booted Chicago State in 2006, and that was before they even had academically strong privates like Denver and St. Thomas in the league who would both be vocal against Chicago State. Chicago State's really only realistic D1 option is the MEAC, and the MEAC would be adding Chicago State for its own survival as the league is down to eight members, and a few of them have wandering eyes and have discussed alternative options at Board of Trustees meetings. Chicago State is the only Division I member that the MEAC could successfully convince to join, and the D2 league that the MEAC would poach from, the CIAA, only has three members at 30% of the MEAC's lowest budget football school. So meaning that league has very few schools that could even think about jumping up to Division I. And two of those, Bowie State and Winston-Salem State, already, already publicly denied the MEAC before they were contacted, citing no interest in D1 membership and especially no interest in the expenses they would incur in Division I. So that only leaves Virginia State as a realistic D2 option for the MEAC. So the MEAC's final options would be Chicago State and Virginia State. And Virginia State is the pivotal school the MEAC needs to add, not only because they're an HBCU and not only because of geography, but also because Virginia State has football and baseball, and they would provide a cushion against a football member leaving, whereas Chicago State would be more so of an insurance edition as Chicago State does not offer football and Chicago State had just dropped baseball. The MEAC is at the minimum six football schools and the MEAC needs a six baseball school. Chicago State is not an HBCU, but it can fit culturally into the MEAC because it's a predominantly black institution. And the location of Chicago could be attractive for the MEAC schools because Chicago has a large African-American population that doesn't get exposed to HBCUs as much as they could just simply due to geography. So it's a way for those MEAC schools to kind of tap in into an untapped, kind of untapped HBCU market for general students. Also, Chicago State would not have to pay the $1.6 million that any school moving up from D2 into D1 would have to pay. A little timeline on Chicago State's history. In 84, the Cougars moved up to D1 from NAIA after making the NAIA semifinals. They were a pretty good team at the NAIA level. And in 85 and 86, their first two years of D1, the Cougars went 16-11 and 22-6. and These included a double-digit win at NCAA tournament team Wichita State, a double-digit win at fourth-place MVC team Illinois State, and a win over Butler. But in 87, UIC poached coach Bob Hallberg away from Chicago State, and that's when Cougar basketball started to fall off a bit. In 93, Chicago State left Independence to join the East Coast Conference, but that would be short-lived as a year later the Mid-Continent Conference would absorb the East Coast Conference. Chicago State would belong to the Mid-Continent Conference for 12 years and advance to the Mid-Continent Final in their final year in a loss to Oral Roberts. But later that spring, the Mid-Continent would boot Chicago State. Well, technically, Chicago State withdrew preemptively before they could get booted as the NCAA was investigating Chicago State for department-wide violations, and there were rumors of unpaid membership dues. In 2009, Chicago State joined the no-auto-bid Great West, and then 2013, the Cougars got their WAC ticket. And now in 2022, Chicago State will become an independent after the WAC will not renew Chicago State's contract. Chicago State plays in the Jones Convocation Center, which opened in 2007, has 7,000 capacity in a skybox. It was constructed at a cost of $47 million, which was allocated from the state of Illinois Treasury, 